Welcome to a bitterly cold Stafford Agricultural Centre. We're here this weekend to focus our attention on just one group. This is Around the Dog World at British Utility Breeds Association. Here at Booba, we'll be watching the action from the best ensuring a little later on. But first, we want to examine a little closer a few of the breeds in the group, including Bulldogs, their Gallic counterparts French Bulldogs, Keysons and Standard Poodles. But first, we'd like to give a very warm welcome back to Di Johnson. I'm sure there are many people that would like to welcome you back very, very warmly indeed. Um, first of all, we have to look at the best in show winners since our last programme. Uh, Midland Counties was the next stop. Uh, and at this part of the programme, it's become habit to talk of Oliver the Wire Fox Terrier, champion Travella Strike and Steel. Today is no different. 20th Best in Show win. And I know you remember us watching him get his very first Best in Show at, in this hall. Uh, Birmingham National. And you and I said then, wow, he really is an exciting dog. Yeah. He's bred well, he's been conditioned and shown well. And I don't ever remember a dog winning 20 best he, He's the first dog ever to break out of the teens. Wow. Great. And of course, a week later was Working Pastoral Breeds of Scotland. Um, the dual group show was topped by a Pyrenean Mountain Dog. I'll have yes. to read this one. Uh, champion Shari Bear, Simply Special at Chazana. But we also saw it winning the group at South Wales. We did, under Rodney Oldham, and we liked him then. And then I believe it was Michael Quinney who found him for a best in show. And his close family, if you like to call it, has had a great success this year. His sire and his litter sister have also had group wins. Really? Yeah. That's quite something, isn't it's it? It's incredible, isn't it? Congratulations. And we stay in Scotland for gun dogs this time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Swedish judge awarded an Irish setter for Northern Ireland a group win in Scotland. Show champion Gwenderif Whippersnapper. It was the, the dog's second group win. It also won a group earlier on at East of England this year. And we've seen oh, it it's place that one. Yeah, yes, and we've seen yes. it placing a few times on the program. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, I liked it because I, I was commentating at the East of England, yes. so I do remember it. <laughs> yeah, nice dog. Which brings us here to Bingley Hall at Booba, and there's a great atmosphere around. Yes. There always is at group shows, Simon, and particularly the utility group because it is, without doubt, the most exciting of the groups. There's such a diversity of type within the breeds. Explain to us the classification of the utility group because. For someone looking from the outside, it's, it's so diverse. Yes. Well, I have to say, they're not going to be flattered by me saying this, it's almost the group that they shoved everything in that they didn't think fitted into another group, isn't yeah. it? But as it happens, it turned out to be um, such an interesting group and a group known for the presentation. One of the breeds that takes an awful lot of presentation is, of course, the standard poodle, which brings us on to a year that very few people have ever experienced top dog and Crufts Best in Show in a single year. We went to speak to Crufts Best in Show winner, Jason Lee. So Jason, what has the year been like since top dog, uh, you are in fact best in show here last year, and then Crufts Best in Show? Well, since March it's been a lot quieter. I mean, obviously Crufts was a huge high and probably not something that we can top anytime soon. But really it's been um, quite relaxing. We've had puppies to show and We've just sort of taken it easy. We've not gone to every show. And, and since Crufts, Ricky went to Peru. What's he up to now? Yeah, during the summer, um, Ricky went to Peru to uh, a lady called Elaria Chiabati. Um, so he's going to be shown in South America. Yeah. Um, and he, he's done really well already there. He's won several best in shows. And I think a lot of people were happy to see you know, a Crufts best in show winner in that part of the world. Yeah. And he's obviously <laughs> looking great. He's very happy where he is, um, and he, he really is in a fantastic home. And when I spoke to Mike earlier in the year at Hound Association of Scotland, he said you were looking for the next big thing. Have you found it? Well, we, actually, funny enough, today was the first show for two puppy bitches who are out of Ricky's sister, right. um, and th their father is a dog from Norway. So it was, you know, they're six months old, first time out. They've won their classes, looking really good. So the next generation, the beat goes on. And you also made up another bitch today as well. Yeah, Ricky's daughter. She won the reserve CC at Crofts uh, as a puppy. Uh, she was from his first litter, and today she got her third ticket and is a new champion. Yeah. So we'll see you in the best ensuring. Yes, well, you'll see Michael actually. <laughs> okay. but, yeah. Well, thank you very much, Jason. Best of luck in best in show. That, of course, leads us on to talking a little bit more about the standard poodle. I went to see Linda Barker to find out more about one of the show ring's most successful breeds.
Well, thank you, Linda, for letting us drop in and meet you and Ebony. Um, we can see from the, the cabinet behind you, you've quite practised with a pair of scissors. You yes. had a great success <laughs> grooming. Yes, we have. Yeah, I've been very lucky. Now, in the UK, the standard and both the miniature and toy poodles are both registered in the utility group, but actually they wouldn't be out of place in a gun dog group. No, they were originally um, thought of as being a German water dog and they have been known to do gun dog work and been quite successful at it. And even now, I have had a couple of clients that have used them as gun dogs. Um, and the trim, uh, some people think they look a little bit silly perhaps when they're in a full continental show trim. It originally came from when they were hunting dogs. Right. Um, if you see any old pictures of a poodle or poodle type dog, they were in a trim not so different from this. The main hair was to keep the vital organs um, warm when they were working. Um, and then we're going back down to the back end here. The pack covering the top part of the body here um, was to keep the kidneys warm. Then you've got the knee joint, there was a band round here to keep that wet warm, and then round the ankles um, to keep the ankle joints warm. Um, the coat is a wool, so you, they don't actually molt. Um, when you brush them, you may get a bit in the, in the brush. But with regards to the coat, there has been some recent changes regarding their presentation in the show ring. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, originally we had to show them in the traditional show trim, which was this trim, which is the Continental, or the English saddle, or puppy pants but now it's been relaxed that we can now show in any trim. Uh, so that suggests you can still show a corded poodle? Yes, you can, yeah. What exactly does it take to, to get a corded poodle? Um, that's quite interesting actually, because I actually do a corded poodle here. Um, basically, cords are formed naturally, um, and it's a case of just keeping them divided and separated and creating the, the cords, and as the dog gets older, they've become um, heavier and thicker. And as we're talking about showing dogs, as a breed they have had just about more success than, than any other. Crufts alone, best yeah. in show, there have been yeah. four different standard poodle winners. Yeah. What is it about a standard poodle that makes them such good show dogs? I, they're very elegant dogs, they're very showy, they're very confident, they're very happy. The show ring is their place really. They're very clever dogs, very amenable as well. And you often find a, a poodle doing um, a lot of the other canine disciplines that are, are out there, such as obedience, five ball, agility. When uh, a puppy buyer is looking for a standard poodle, is there anything in particular they should be looking for? Do's um, and don'ts? Just make sure both parents have been health tested. Generally, if you go to a show home, they're bred to improve confirmation and improve everything about the breed. Yes. And if that's the case, they, they're breeding you know, a quality, sound dog, hopefully. And again, things like doodles. Can you advise anyone on do's and don'ts with regards to doodles? <laughs> That's a good one. Um, I, th I don't think people actually realise what they're taking on when they take on the doodles, because if you say to them, would you go and buy a poodle, generally their answer is no, because you ask them why, because there's a lot of work in them and actually there's exactly the same amount of work in the doodle and people do not realise that because they're often told they don't need grooming. They come in here at four months old and you break the news to them that they have, we have to see them every you know, four to six weeks. Um, they are quite shocked. Um, and what about maintenance of a standard poodle? There's clearly a lot yes, that goes into it. Yes, into it. You, you wouldn't necessarily keep them like this for, as a pet. Um, only for the fact it's, it's just so much work and so much time and effort needs to go into it. If you're buying a puppy, I would say that you'd need to visit a groomer around about every six weeks. But I mean, as a normal pet trim, put a brush for them every week or so at home um, and that gets them through. But anything like this, this is daily grooming. This is not, you know, once a week job. <laughs> and we've seen Ebony here. She's up and down like a jack-in-a-box. Yes. Exercise. What's their requirement? Yeah, they do need um, quite a bit of exercise. They are a breed which if anything like her, if it's raining, she's loath to go out in it. Um, but on a bright sunny day, yeah, she's out there running around and getting absolutely filthy. You know, they, they will take as much exercise as you give them, but they, you know, are not stir crazy when you leave them and they can't get out for the day. And, and what about life with children? Are they a great family Very, dog? Really, really good. As long as the children respect the dog, you, the dog will respect them. Yeah. Um, that's, that's vitally important. You know, they're quite bouncing, quite mad around the house, the dogs, but when the children's up and, you know, learn to walk, they are so careful around them. It's quite amazing to watch, because normally they just steamroll through anything that's in its way.
good morning everybody. Now when they're made reasonably well and trained physically like you would a gymnast which is really all that dressage is, you end up with something that stays sound for a very great deal longer. What a fabulous walk. Group, but also getting very well known in the utility group. The first breed for Tom to judge is the Akita, Redwich She's a Tease. While Tom gets on with his judging, I'll interrupt along the way to get a bit of an insight into a few of the breeds he has in the ring today. And this is the Akita number six. And the Boston Terrier is number one, two, zero. I promise, these exhibitors won't mind if you clap. That's better. And now Tom is examining the Bulldog, a breed we wanted to get a better understanding of. So we met up with Bulldog breeder Chris Thomas of Atlanta. Well, thank you Chris for sitting and talking to us. Thank um, you very much. May as well start from the beginning. How exactly did the Bulldog come about? It was rather a strange thing that when I was a youngster, I was besotted with the Collie films, Lassie. Yeah. My parents just assumed that if I could have a dog, that would be the breed that I would go for. And so for my 12th birthday, they bought me a Collie puppy, which <laughs> I then proceeded to do junior handling with yeah. and had a lot of fun around the shows. But as the years went by and I started attending more and more competitions, the breed that I realised that I really loved were the Bulldogs. Right. And so I was lucky enough to have a Bulldog puppy bought for me for my 21st birthday. Brilliant. Which is, um, we won't go into how many years ago. But, <laughs> uh, and it sort of took off from there, really. And, and what appealed to you about the Bulldog? I just loved everything about them. I mean, I love the fact that they were a relatively small breed, a lot in a small package, yeah. a breed that I would be happy to show myself, and I just love the appearance of them. Um, and let's go a bit further back in history. Tell us about the development of the breed. Well, obviously, originally, they were bred as a baiting breed. Right. The original name, Bandog, came from the fact they would spend most of their time bound up right. because the temperaments of them were so dubious. Uh, after the bulldog baiting was outlawed in 1835, there was much more likelihood that outcrosses to other breeds would start to take place. Yeah. And for that reason, a group of bulldog enthusiasts decided to start the first bulldog club, right. which was actually okay. founded in 1865. Okay. Although the club itself only lasted for 10 years, one of their main achievements was they drew up the first bulldog breed standard the first blueprint that we'd ever had for the breed. When that club folded, the Bulldog Club Incorporated was founded, right. which is a club that's still in existence today. So with that outlawing of bull baiting, because the sport was no longer allowed, the temperament had to change, didn't it? Yes, it did. I mean, the only way the breed could continue after the abolition of bull baiting was for the dog to be kept as a family pet. I mean, the temperament was improved very quickly. Yeah. By the end of the 1800s, bad temperament in bulldogs was very much a thing of the past. Yeah. And really, from that date on to the present day, one of their main attributes is their fantastic temperament. I mean, they're such an easy breed to live with because they get on with uh, other dogs. They make good family pets. They love the companionship of children. And they're just a really easy breed to have around. Bringing us to, to more recent times, there have been some difficulties in the breed. Uh, in 2012, they were included on the Kennel Club's high profile list. How was that received? I think that it, in, amongst Bulldoggers, it was seen as inevitable once the Kennel Club decided to create a high profile breed list. Yeah. Even though the health of the breed has improved incredibly over the, the 40 years that we've been involved with them, the problem has always been with Bulldogs that 
people know that with a flat face breeze, they're probably not going to be as energetic in a lot of respects as the longer muzzled breeds. Having said that, many bulldogs will walk three or four miles a day with no problem at all. Yeah. But you have to be aware that there will be limitations when it comes to extremely hot weather. Yeah. I mean, during the hottest part of the day, bulldogs love to lie out in the sun, which is ironic. But you couldn't take that dog probably out in a car when it's baking hot. So we always knew there were restrictions, but it applies to all of the brachycephalic breeds. And you said you've seen improvements over the past 40 years. Since the health checks, have you seen an improvement? I think there have been slight improvements in as much as uh, exhibitors and judges have had to be more aware. But I think that's the one thing that Bulldoggers resent is the implication that because the Kennel Club have told us there are problems in the breed, we've become aware of it. Yeah. Certainly in all of the years that we've been associated with the breed, breeders have constantly worked to improve the health of the yeah. breed. And we've spoken about the breed in the past. How do you see the breed in 10 years' time? We're very, very optimistic. I mean, the breed is literally going from strength to strength. Yeah. The quality of exhibits in the ring at the moment has never been surpassed. The improvement in the overall quality of Bulldogs, yeah. the breed's type, and from a health point of view, uh, has exceeded all expectations. It really has. And the Bulldog is number 185. The Canaan dog is number 305. And the Chow Chow is number 345. And the Dalmatian's number is 389. And it looks like a lady to me. And the Eurasia's number is 484. We learned a little more about the Bulldog, so it's only fair we do the same for its French counterpart. I met with Francis Crowell to find out a bit more about the French Bulldog. Thank you, Francis, for, for letting us drop in. Um, French Bulldogs are not necessarily what people no. will associate no. with you with. Tell our, us a bit about your history in dogs. Well, our very first breed were Great Danes. Yeah. Then, I don't know why, really, we bought ourselves a giant schnauzer bitch. I said to Jack at the time, oh, they'll never take the place of the Great Danes. <laughs> but they took over somehow. Yeah. And, you know, we were very successful with them. Mm, so Very successful indeed. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Across the best in children. Yes, yeah, very proud of that. Very proud. Um, so how exactly have French Bulldogs come about? Well, that's funny. We were very, very friendly with a, a young man called Tom Kentish. We lived nearby and he started with French Bulldogs. And... We absolutely loved them and uh, we got one of his French Bulldog puppies and that was 30 years ago now and I've always had them, bred litters, yeah. but they were always on a different day but uh, we've got older now, we've decided to downsize. And what was it that attracted you to the breed? Oh, fantastic personalities, great family dogs. I wouldn't say they're the best guard dogs in the world. <laughs> <laughs> they're quite welcoming, you know, come in everybody. But um, they do something that makes you laugh every day, <laughs> guaranteed. And I love the look of them. <laughs> I love that squashed face. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a few things going on in French yeah. Bulldog at the yeah. moment, one of which is the issue of colour. Breeders would like a change to the standard to, to clarify. Yes, Can yeah. you explain a bit further? Yeah. Uh, at the moment, the clubs have got together and there is a motion to accept 
what is called the fawn pied. You know, it's the white background, but with fawn patches. But it's the blues, black and tans, chocolates, that really are just a no-no. Years ago, apparently, one or two blues cropped up, but breeders, you know, pass them on as pets with no papers, not to be bred from. But of course, I suppose one or two have cropped up, having been bought for mega money. And there's, <coughs> there's a, a, perhaps a branding issue. These strange colours are being suggested as, as rare colours. Absolutely. Rather than incorrect. Absolutely. And the, the problem, I think one, a big problem is the fact that the Kennel Club do register them. Although they're unrecognised colour, they register them. So that's really a seal of approval. Yeah, and the French Bulldog some years ago was, was incredibly popular, obviously in France. Can you explain to us its original purpose? They came down from the Bulldog, right. the little small ones, and they say they were around Nottingham with lace makers and the, you know, that trade. But when the Industrial Revolution came and machines took over, a lot of those people went to France right to continue their work and took these little dogs with them. Right. And then some of them had the prick ears and the French really took on to that. And that was the French bulldog. And it's always said that fashion comes back around uh, and the French somewhat oh. proves that. Um, yes. Back in the late 1800s, the French bulldog um, or its predecessors in France were incredibly popular. Yes, yeah. Um, the breed, however, became fairly unpopular again. Mm. But just in the last 10 years. Explosion. Um, yeah. Th there were yeah. only 350 registers in 2004. In 2013, just shy of 7,000. Yeah. That, that you difference. can't believe it, can you? No. And we're three quarters of the way through 2014, and there are more registered now than there were in the whole of last year. Is that even healthy? It's, it's not good for the breed. It's a shame. A lot of them are good, um, bred by, you know, decent breeders because they are, you can see why they're popular. They're so lovely to live with, such personalities. But we have had an influx of whole litters being brought into the country from Eastern Europe. Right. Um, underage, some of them. I know some of them have had to end up going into quarantine. Puppy buyers should be patient. I know it's difficult because when we wanted our very first dog, I had to have it yesterday. So I do understand that. <laughs> But you're not going to find one round the corner on the date that you think you want it. Yeah. So what is it that you look for in a French Bulldog puppy? Well, the parents are important. Um, heads are important. The first thing you look at on a dog of any breed is the head. They've got to be cobby puppies. They're lumpy, a lumpy breed. I know that sounds a funny word to use, but they have that slight roach. Um, they should be short. With good bone, although they're fairly small, they're quite a hefty breed. I like to watch them running around. I start watching them from five, six weeks onwards, and uh, I've usually got a pretty good eye. <laughs> <laughs> and the French's number is five, four, three. And the gentleman speaks line is number 717. And the German speaks middle is number 750. The Japanese Akita Inu is number 787. Seven. 
the Japanese Shiba Inu is number 809. And the Japanese Spitz is number 892. And the last stoppage for today's programme is a breed most people will be pretty unfamiliar with. But one lady who knows a great deal about the Kisond is Jean Sharpdale. Thank you, Jean, for letting us drop in and meet you and Barry. Tell us a little bit about how you first got involved in the breed. They're not a, they're not a regular breed that you'd expect no. to see. No, they're not. Um, originally, I was never allowed a dog as a child. And, uh... Strange how many stories start that way. <laughs> And then um, my brother was getting a divorce and he had three dogs and my mother came back home with a three-month-old Chow Cross Kazon puppy right. for me to look after. I didn't know what a Kazon was until I looked into the breed and then I, as soon as I saw them I fell in love with them. And tell us a bit about the breed itself. It's a, is a German Spitz? <clears throat> no. The Germans um, reckon they they have the breed. Right. In in our opinion, they come from Holland. Right, OK. And they were bred for uh, being barge dogs, playmates for the children, good protectors of the barges and their possessions, and also navigating on the barges so that the in the foggy weather, the um, other barges would hear the dogs barking. We call them watchdogs. They're yeah. a warning dog. They'll tell people that somebody's around. The appearance is, is one that's very striking, always catches mm -hmm. the eye. Run us over what you'd expect to see in a Kazond. Um, what do you expect to see? A nice square dog, um, good contrast in colour, no yellow, a nice wedge head, a wedge from both sides, and a nice stop here. An almond shaped eyes, obliquely set with spectacles, which are very important. And the spectacles, although they have these little eyebrows as well, which is enhancing them, is the spectacle is actually the line from the corner of the eye to the base of the ear. They have a black mask, where they get a little bit lighter as they get older. They have a double curl tail, and the curl sits high. Small, nicely set, pricked ears, ivy-shaped if possible. But they should be fantastic with children, extremely loving. They hate being a kennel dog uh, and they're greedy and they can be thieves. Right. And they can be too intelligent for their own good sometimes. <laughs> and the coat makes them look like there's, a, there's an awful lot of work involved. Is, is that no, the case? No, no, not really. The coats are a double coat and there is a thing now which unfortunately our club has put onto breed watch that the coats should be looked at as getting too long. Right. Um, in my opinion, I haven't seen a long-coated Kazon. Heavy-coated, profusely coated, mm. yes. I took them out onto the rain the other night and they were, had a headlight on mm. and they were all shining in the rain. And when I came back in, they just shook themselves off. I gave them a quick rub down on their feet and everything and they were fine. Mm. And they're waterproof coats. They're not, they don't get wet. It's, it's hard to get them wet yeah. right down to the mm -hmm. skin. Um, and the top stud dog, that's actually a, an American it dog. It is an American dog, um, yes. That's something that is quite impressive yes. with the breed. The amount of cooperation that goes on, yeah. not just with breeders in the UK, but breeders worldwide. Yes, yeah, they are. We're a, a small breed and we've got a very small genetic pool. And if they want health, which the Kennel Club do, and as a breeder I do, yeah. I have to go out to get different bloodlines. Of course, yeah. You said intelligence is something to be a little bit wary of, mm -hmm. do you have to treat them slightly differently because they're, they're quite an intelligent You have to breed? treat them firmly. You, I always tell people when they have a puppy, don't let them get away with, as a puppy, what you don't want them to get away with as an adult. Right. So if you don't want them on a settee, you don't let them get on the settee. And around the age of 18 months old, they go through what we call a teenage period, adolescence, and they test you. I've got a young dog out there at the moment. He's starting to test me. I don't know why I gave him a name, because he doesn't come to me. <laughs> but <laughs> and they aren't a breed with a great many numbers. No. But I've only been here 20 minutes and I want to take one home. Mm. So 
anyone that's looking for a Keyson puppy, can you suggest what they should do? Whoever looks for a puppy need really to go to the Kennel Club site and go to an assured breeder. Yeah. If a Keyson is around, a puppy is around, they will never be bred in kennels. So if the puppies are in kennels, don't buy them. Um, but they don't like being away from humans. They like human contact. And the Keyson number is 929. And the Kuka Honji number is 969. Laza Abso number is 1028. The miniature Snantos number is 1093. And the miniature poodle is number And the standard poodle number is 1275. And the skipper key is 1377. The Snouter is number 1401. And the Sharpe is number 1471. The Shih Tzu number is 1492. And the number for the Tibetan Spaniel is 1639. Number for the Disband Terrier is one eight three four. <laughs> Mr. Mother is shortlisting now. Right, warm your hands up, say thank you to the others. If 
uh, the new chairman was sat in the audience tonight. Yes. What would you ask him? To care. I see myself as the judge that was banned. So we still have the Chow Chow, the Dalmatian, the French Bulldog, the Middle Spitz, the Standard Poodle, the Shiba Inu, the Shih Tzu, Tibetan Terrier, Tibetan Spaniel, and Sharpe. We have the Chow Chow, the Dalmatian. The French Bulldog. The German Spitz Mittel. We have all those puppies to the vaccine ring, and all those puppies to the vaccine ring fine. And the standard poodle. And the Japanese Shiba Inu. My sincere apologies to this gentleman, it is in fact a Lazar. The Tibetan Terrier. The Tibetan Spaniel. And the Sarpe. One thousand eight hundred and fifty dogs and the winners, the Dalmatian. <laughs> Runner up, the Laza. Third, the Chow Chow. And fourth, the Sarpe. And thank you very much to the others. Come on, put your hands together for those. Well, Elaine, Reba's gone into Best in Show at Booba under Tom Mather, and you've come out with the top prize. How do you feel? Absolutely thrilled. Couldn't ask any more of us, really. 
does show the socks off today, as we say. She's been absolutely superb all day. She's really done well. And we very proud. Here and around the dog row, we haven't seen a great deal of Reba before. But tell, no. us, tell us what she, she's done she, before. She has won really well all this year. She's This is a 7cc today. Yeah. She's had two best in shows at Dalmatian Club shows. But she does the show today, just gives you her all every time. She's not easy to show because she's busy, <laughs> but she gives you her all. Yeah. She, she certainly looks yeah. superb in there. How old is Reba now? She's three and a half now, so we're looking for a husband for her <laughs> so shortly. And hopefully then we can have some puppies. And of course, the Dalmatians were still being judged as the group was being called. So yeah. you must have been worried you weren't even going to get into the group. It's all been a blur today. <laughs> she's just been very busy, busy. So she was a bit excited going in, but she calmed down and did her job. So. And, and you're saying you've had a, a bit of a good record under the judge today? Yeah, I, I'm sure he gave her the best puppy in show in, at an open show in Lancashire somewhere. So I knew he did like her, but there's a lot of lovely dogs in there. Well, massive congratulations. So and much. I hope we see some more of Reba because it was great to see her in the ring. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the bulldog is number one eight five. And this is the Akita. The Dalmatian. <laughs> and the Japanese Shiba Inu. <laughs> the Laza Apso. And the Shih Tzu. And last but not least, the Tibetan Terrier. Well, congratulations, Debbie. It sounds like Lenny has had a rather good day. He really has. He's won Best of Breed, his first CC, and Best Puppy in show. Tell us a bit, a little bit about Lenny. Lenny's nine months old today. Passed his vet check with flying colours. Said he was the nicest bulldog he's assessed for quite a while. That's fantastic to hear. From what we've heard today, I think we might see a lot more of Lenny. I really hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Very much. Well, Tom, I hope you enjoyed your, your judging this evening. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's always an honour to judge a group, and it's a special honour to do the, the group show. Yes. So it was lovely. Uh, and there was a lovely atmosphere on the ringside. Even on a cold, dark night, people stayed <laughs> to watch. So that you know, that's always pleasing. Um, and the Dalmatian judging went on quite a while today, so you almost missed it, but you, you clearly rather liked it. I did. I thought she was so unexaggerated, graceful, athletic, muscular. She covered the ring well. 
her full form is absolutely perfect and she's a lovely type and well spotted. And pick us out a couple of your other placings. Right. The last wrap, so it's a colour I've got a soft spot for, perfect for size and type and probably one of the best fronts you'll find in the breed. Yeah. In third place I had a lovely chow and I, I think I've had him in a group before and right. I placed him in a group certainly. He's got a very typical stilted action, but he's still free moving, if yes. that's not a contradiction. Yes, <laughs> Lovely clean eyes, neat ears, and he's just a jolly good dog. And the sharp pair I've never seen before. For a breed that sometimes has criticism for health yeah. issues, a lovely clean face and um, was actually a very very good moving bitch and you speak of health criticisms there the, the next breed is possibly the most health criticized of all but Absolutely past its vet check with flying colors because it was best of breed as well right um what do you think of best puppy and show the bulldog well when i had him in the group i thought he was lovely and i thought should i shortlist him i thought no don't because it might preclude anything you do later on, but I did like him. He's still got a lot to change about him because he is a baby. Yeah. He's good moving, he's got a very typical head, good size, got a lovely tail that's well away from the body, yeah. uh, and just a delightful temperament. He must surely have a really good future in the breed, I would think. Best in show at British Utility Breeds 2014 was the Dalmatian champion, Dali Vero Reba Mac at Elimstra. That was a challenge, wasn't it? Just a little bit. Not easy. Lucky we've got a catalogue. <laughs> Not easy. I think she's won six or seven CCs. Yeah. Lovely balance bit. She moved well, didn't she? Yeah. It was, I thought, Simon, a very even lineup, right. really. You know, not, good quality throughout, but not n nothing quite actually stood away, right. did it? Uh, but I know you were very happy to see the best puppy in show winner. I thought it was a very nice bulldog puppy. Yeah. I've got a soft spot for a bulldog, yes. but I knew the way Tom was looking. I, Tom made us a very good judge and a watchable judge because he lets you see what he's interested in. I thought the bulldog puppy was all of a piece, moved well. I personally thought the puppy lineup probably a bit more exciting than the best in show right, lineup. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Di. It's been lovely to have you well, back. It's nice to see you again. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching and we'll speak to you next time on Around the Dog World when we review a record-breaking 2014.